What's in the can? No, what's in the can? Oh, all right. <laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> no, no, no. I to me, if anybody's asking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to call this meeting the Oskaloosa City Council to order. Today is Monday, August 18th, 2014. Why don't we start with the invocation by Pastor Alvern Boatsma. Good News Chapel. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you seeking your guidance and direction for the many decisions that are about to be made. May there also be open discussion and a willingness to do what's best for the city of Oskaloosa and the lives of each of us who live therein. Be with each of the council members various boards, commissions as they serve on. Also with the city manager and the mayor, the clerk, the attorneys, the public works directors and others who work with matters that affect our city on a day-to-day -day basis, not only for today, but in the days that lie ahead for people yet to come. We ask also that you will be with the planning and zoning, the housing, the police, the library, the street department, fire, water, and other departments that make our city what it is. Forgive our sins in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, thank you. Charlie, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Calder. Here. Jimenez. Here. Moore. Here. Benzen. Yes. Verste. Here. Walling. Here. Yates. Here. Okay. Next item, item four on the agenda is community comments. This item is reserved to receive comments from the community for concerns whether or not they're included on the current agenda. The community is encouraged to come and speak before the mayor and city council, asked to keep statements brief. Uh, the time shall be limited to no more than three minutes. Any questions that are to be asked of the city staff or the council members or the mayor, we ask that that be done prior to speaking to the full council, so that way any concerns can be properly researched and possibly even addressed without coming to the full council and away from this meeting. Uh, comments are to be directed to the mayor and city council only. Is there anyone who would care to speak at this time? Yes, sir. Name and address, please. My name is Gary Green. I'm, I reside at 1510 Edmondson Drive, suite number four. And I'm here representing the Tuscany Village Homeowner Association as their chairman. I'm gonna read a statement concerning um, the regular agenda item A, the Tuscany Village site plan revisions. I've left a uh, copy of a signed statement uh, with your city clerk. Uh, we're here to discuss the regular agenda item relative to the recommendation of the August 11th, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission that the City Council approve the revisions to the site plan and also weigh the requirement for a sidewalk at 1510 Edmondson Drive. Relative to the required sidewalk placement along the public street frontage of 1510 Edmondson Drive, we support the August 11, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation to waive the sidewalk requirement. The sidewalk construction as planned between the Edmondson City Park north and south will only provide a continued dangerous situation for pedestrians using the sidewalk, especially to the north where the sidewalk will end. They will go back to the street through the ditch. If 
the council is determined to have a new sidewalk constructed at 1510 Edmondson Drive, we would hope the leaders of our community would review an alternative to extend that sidewalk to the north within the park to the west gate of Edmondson Park at the wooden playground area. Our children and our grandchildren would be able to access that fun area <coughs> with a much safer alternative than walking in the street, which they do now. Our association would support such a positive step by the council with a commitment to have that sidewalk extension placed within the next two years. Thank you and we hope that you will take the time to examine the alternatives outlined. These new residential properties have been a positive addition to the city of Oskaloosa and obviously will eventually help with the city's budget. Thank you. And I would, I'd ask, answer questions if you have any. Thank you. Would anyone else care to speak at this time? Yes, sir. Uh, Andrew Jensen, 2109 Edmondson Drive. Um, actually, I'm just speaking as a, as, as a resident uh, right now from on Edmondson Drive, um, and I support sidewalks. Um, I have, from a number of different perspectives, um, I would really encourage um, the implementation of sidewalks um, in the Tuscany Village area. Um, with the intention of um, long-term implementation, being able to um, connect more of the community to sidewalks. Um, as developments go in, if we don't put in sidewalks when they go in, it's much harder um, to either assess homeowners later um, or for the city to, to pay for it later. As one who has small kids who lives further on down on Edmondson Drive, um, walking up to that playground, any sidewalks between between where you know myself and other small young families live in that area, um, between there and the playground, um, it would certainly be a benefit. So that's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else care to speak at this time? I'm Wayne Hook. 205 Fairview Drive, Oskaloosa. I live in one of the fewer, newer subdivisions in Oskaloosa that does have complete sidewalks. However, I'm not up here to speak concerning that. I'm here to speak concerning the franchise fee as proposed and the hearing to be this evening. I don't know if I'm at the improper time for that. Should I wait for the hearing? Your, either time would work, so you're welcome to speak at this time. Okay. The old president of Chain Lumber Yards that the last one closed about a year ago approximately, always laughingly told me in relation to lumber, he said it's always easier to take from a big pile. By big pile, I'm inferring that right now we're wanting to impose an increased franchise tax onto the house owners of Oskaloosa. There's approximately 5,000 household houses. With the proposed increase for those 5,000 units, you'd be raising about a quarter of a million dollars from them. Right now, if I understand it correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the residential or the industrial has been proposed to go from 1.5% to 3.5%, which would be a 233% increase. The residential and commercial has been proposed to go from 3% to 5%, which is a 166% increase. I would propose that commercial be on the same footing that industrial is, that it be raised to 233% as opposed to 166% as in the proposed. I would also suggest if there has to be an increase to probably increase residential from 3% to 4%. 
However, my guesstimation after being 30 years an appraiser, real estate broker in this community, and having appraised in about five counties, I'm always prone to do a little statistical work. But it's been brought to my attention that it probably houses that are assessed in the area of $144,000 will always bear the burden of the tax bill in most any community in the state of Iowa. However, in this particular instance, we have a lot of older homes, older two-story homes, that the utility bills in the winter can run anywhere from $200 to $500 per month. And these are quite probably, I would suggest, some of the people that can least afford an increase. Walmart, I think I picked it up. I confirmed a little bit of it with the assessor, but I tried to check on my computer and uh, definitely the legalese was a little lengthy concerning the tax increase or decrease, excuse me, that's coming down the pipe for commercial and industrial property. As near as I can tell, it's like 10% decrease the first year and then it goes blah, 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 blah. But I'm gonna say it's a 20% decrease. If we would just pick out our largest retailer, who I don't think it's very hard to consider or figure out who it is, he's pretty much in the west end of town, he's pretty much driven a lot of our small businesses out of town because we no longer have men's clothing stores, drug stores, shoe stores, and all of those I would submit to you supported the YMCA because I went down at noon when I was working at Hawkeye Lumber and worked, with, worked out with a lot of these fellows and their history, they're gone and they'll never be back. But I would also submit to you that that particular retailer is assessed right now at $7,764,750. If the assessment for their property is based on $6,211,800 at 80%, at 100% tax rate that it is currently, the taxes would be $263,248, $263,248. $263,000, excuse me, $248. At 80%, their tax bill would be $223,625. I estimate, having been acquainted with commercial buildings, and I've done everything from city levies to protect from flooding and et cetera, and you don't want to hear that. But a 7% tax, I estimate their utilities at being about $72,000 per year. I stand to be corrected. At a 7% rate on their utility bill, it would be an increase of $5,040. Based on 5%, it would be $3,600, which is proposed, which would only be an increase to them of $1,440. They're gonna get a tax credit, as near as I can tell, of right at $40,000. So we're weighing $40,000 versus $1,440. I definitely think commercial property should also share the increase in the franchise fee. I think it'd be a travesty if they weren't. I would also like to add that I served on the city council for several years and I know my experience being that I never saw so many no-win deals in my life. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Does anyone else care to speak at this point? Terrell Wolfswinkle, 211 North J. Um, Second reading coming up on the proposed purchase of the alley just the west of my office. Um, didn't know if anyone had any questions. I've talked to some of you on the side. Um, spoke with uh, Mr. Fisher this morning. Um, his biggest concern when we talked this morning is that I was going to block the alley, which I haven't done for 13 years. One of the biggest reasons that I want to own the alley is so one of the reasons I purchased the property to the west of my office was um, to eliminate 
people parking in the alley blocking the ability of my patients to go in and out. Um, if I don't own the alley, I can't ask, actually ask someone to leave if there's parked there because it's a public alley. Um, there's an influx of people through there all the time, UPS trucks, my patients, and it would just be nice if I could control that so that if somebody did park there, blocked access, I could at least ask them to leave. So that's probably the biggest reason I'm doing that. And that was the biggest reason that I bought the property to the west of my office as well to get rid of the old house and eventually build, uh, my plans are to build a new um, professional office there, working on those plans, um, but I haven't have that finalized yet. So if you have any questions about that, um, please hit me with them. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you. Can we ask questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, ordinarily we would call out at, while we were hitting it. Okay, just that. Oh, so. Perfect. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I'm Gary Fisher. I own the car wash that Mr. Wolfsinkel was talking about. And he's right. The reason I don't want the alley vacated is because I don't want it closed. And he says he is not has no intentions of closing it, and I have no reason to doubt him, but there is nothing that says that he couldn't change his mind in a few months or if he sold the property and someone else took over that they would have the same opinion that he does about the alley. And I want it left open because we use it. And we use it, we get some deliveries through there. I use it myself. I have a trailer that I pull. I clean car wash pits too, and I use it. The lawnmower service uses it, you know? And so that is one of the reasons I want it left open. And we also have expansion plans, and some of those um, could be an addition onto the car wash with another automatic bay. But probably a more suitable one that I think is, is really more likely it, that I have planned to do is put a pet wash onto that end of the car wash. And I have a storage building out there now that I use to store all my supplies in, and that would be removed, and we would add on to the west side of the building, and it would be, I can get all the same material, building material and stuff, so it would just be an addition onto there. And half of that would be used for a pet wash, which these have been extremely popular in the car wash industry. And the other half I would use for my storage for my supplies and stuff that, that I put in the utility shed I have out there now. And I would probably, I intend would be to put a couple of, I would have to have a couple of parking spots out front of it too, which would be on the, it would be on the south side then probably. But I have the option to put one on the north side too. And the alley would be very vital to that. Um, people would use it to go in and out of. And if that section is closed, then they would have to make, figure out somehow to turn around in the half of the alley that would still be open. And that's why I want it left open. Any other questions that you have for me, or is there any okay. concerns? Uh, the past practice of the council has been when we hit the agenda item, if we need to talk to someone in the audience, we'll call out to them at that okay. point. Cool. Thank you. And thank you. Anyone else care to speak? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Item number five, it's the consent agenda. Uh, all the items here are uh, basically routine in nature, and this is where in the judgment of staff no discussion is anticipated. I do want to mention, though, that uh, draw your attention to item G, where there's a resolution scheduling a public hearing vacation and sale of 120 foot by 16 and a half foot of a north-south alley and the 56 and a half foot by 16 and a half foot of the east-west alley adjacent to 701 High Avenue West. There's a resolution scheduling a public hearing on vacation and sale of a 60 foot by 16 and a half foot east-west alley adjacent to 701 uh, 2nd Avenue East. And then also considering a resolution approving an increase in the percentage of tax increment rebated to Ironwood Partners, LLC. Uh, that's for the reserves at Ironwood Project. And I'm also recommending the appointment of Ken Alsup to the library board. Uh, so with all that, I'd entertain a motion for approval. So moved. 
Okay. Any discussion on the consent yeah, agenda? I ask a question before I ask to pull I. Sure. If we don't do it, Michael, are they saying it's a deal breaker? Uh, Mayor Council, they have suggested that it creates a funding gap. Well, I read that. So, <laughs> so in all of our discussions, they've, they've tried to bridge the gap between the, the funding for the project the best they could. They've reached out to the Regional Housing Trust Fund, the Oscillus Housing Trust Fund, and of course to the council. Um, I don't know if it's a deal breaker, but I would I suspect they would say it makes the plan. You can't hear. I would suggest that it says that, that they would say it makes the plan less feasible for construction. And the amount of money is still under what we. Yeah, the council said, said it at five ten. Mm -hmm. Correct. Just the way I like to say that. We didn't say we would, if I remember. Yeah. We said we might. Do. Correct. Okay. Oh. Um, Okay. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Caligari. Yes. Jimenez. Yes. Moore. Yes. Van Zetten. Yes. Versteg. Yes. Walling. Yes. Yates. Yes. Okay. That passes. Item 6A, getting into the regular agenda. Uh, item is to consider approval of revisions to the site plan for the property referred to as Tuscany Village, located at 1510 Edmondson Drive. Uh, in the explanation to the council, Brian Boy has submitted a revised site plan for the property referred to as Tuscany Village, located at 1510 Edmondson Drive. The revision is being requested by the applicant due to deviations in the actual construction of the project versus what was approved by the city council in the original site plan. These changes are considered major amendments to the site plan. The site under consideration is 2.21 acres in area. Uh, the present zoning of this property is urban residential, which is an R2 district. There are now six units that have been constructed on the site. At their September 19, 2011 meeting, the City Council approved the site plan. The builder made the following amendments to the site plan that need Council approval. Location of the northernmost building was moved. Sidewalk to the storage units extend to the property line to connect with the park. Storage units lighting plan has changed. And the uh, driveway culvert material is now high density polyethylene instead of concrete. The City Council at their meeting on March 3rd, 2014 denied Mr. Boy's request to waive the stipulation for sidewalks along the public street frontage of 1510 Edmondson Drive. The Council required the builder to install the sidewalks before September 3rd, 2014. At the August 11, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended by a vote of three to zero to one, three yes, no, uh, no's, and one abstention, that the City Council approve the revisions to the site plan and also waive the requirement for the sidewalk on Edmondson Drive. Commission member Brian Boy was the abstention because he's the applicant for the site plan change. Okay. So we have this item before us. Do we have a motion approving the site plan changes? So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion. The site plan is without the sidewalk. Is that correct? Yes. The the request is to remove the sidewalk. <coughs> is that what the motion is for? I just want to make sure that this is approving the new site plan without the sidewalk. That's what the motion is, yes. Okay. I guess I'm not favor of approving that motion on it. That's why I vote. I mean, I'm, I vote, but uh, only one. But I mean, I think we need to look at putting sidewalks in this community when we can. I'm certainly open to looking at things of how we could do it effectively, if that means tying it to additional sidewalk to the park, as was suggested earlier in comments. Uh, I'm, looking at, I'm open to looking at all those things for doing it practically. Uh, I certainly appreciate this boy's um, developments built several wonderful properties in the community and, and I want to continue doing that. But uh, again, as Mr. Jensen come in, I think when we have the opportunity to put sidewalks in this community, we need to do that when it's a development. And my feeling is to take these sidewalks out would be doing the community a disservice. And I would agree with that. Could, like you, could, could you go along with the connectivity plan of saying, all right, well, if and when we lay that park, they'd have to lay it? 
I guess I look at that as a development initiative. If somehow the development developer and the residents would say they'd figure out, I mean, I look at that as a developer's expense putting the sidewalks in. If we wait until at some point we do a con conductivity plan or connectivity plan, we're putting it on the backs of the homeowners then at that point. So if there was some way to put the funds in escrow from the developer until we do it and put the sidewalks in then, or if the homeowners that have bought the property say, yeah, we'll pay for it when you do it without any concern, <clears throat> then I'm willing to look at things like that. But to just walk away from sidewalks, I think, is the wrong thing for the community. And, and I agree. I think everybody wants to put sidewalks in. I think, you well, know. Well, I don't know that based on some comments I've got. <laughs> well, I, I, most people are against it because it, it, there's no connectivity. When we're building sidewalks to nowhere, that's the problem. If we just came up with a simple plan that says, listen, if you're within, you know, a few hundred block or, you know, a couple blocks, we got to connect it all the way together. Sidewalks to nowhere seems to be the problem. That's the rub, I think, with most people. I mean, they put a, a perfectly reasonable offer on the table, and they're saying, hey, they're, you know, we're willing to look at it. And, and, and again, I'm open to that, but I think we need more definition to that than to just waive the site plan now because there's nothing that ties us to that then. Well, and along with that, you know, the, the, the site plan has changed without approval for the most part until after the fact. So there's been a lot of other stuff go on with that, so that's a. Uh, you know, I think the sidewalks ought to go in. And Why did the city require <coughs> to have a new site plan? It's only requesting one lot to be changed, not the whole uh, association or the whole development. Mayor, Council, the items that the mayor had gone over, one through four, were noted as uh, changes from the original to the actual construction. So if you're building a building in a different location than where your site plan says you were supposed to build one, that's a major amendment. That's that requires a new site plan. Okay, then answer me this, Michael. In 2011, William Penn built a new dorm out here the same day that he was had his plan on the agenda. I question that the sidewalks in on him. I question why William Penn didn't have to put a new on Lacey Drive. You told me, and it was in their plans, if I remember correctly, that, that William Penn was going to put sidewalks on Market Street. That was not done. Now, when did we vote on them taking their sidewalks out of Market Street? I'm going to interrupt that, though. What does William Penn have to do with this? It has a lot to do with it. I guess I'm... What's good I'm, for the goose is good for the gander. You're making this man put sidewalks into nowhere. William Penn got out of putting theirs in. To me, that, that's, that's just opening up the door for a loss. Uh, Ma Mayor, we Council... Shouldn't, we shouldn't be treated that. Treated that way. Council Member Stegg, I don't have my notes in front of me, but if, if I recall correctly, uh, William Penn submitted a, a revised site plan, and the council, this council, unanimously approved that. Okay, I want to see those minutes. Yes, sir. All right. I I'll guess. Be, I'll be in tomorrow to look at it. Okay. What bothers me the most is we don't have a consistent policy. We never have had. Well. Some people have sidewalks, some don't. Tom Gillespie was here. We I don't know if I can we let him take his out. Yes. Uh, we did this with Penn. We did it with the Nazarene Church. We either have to decide this is how we're going to do it, or it seems like we've made the decision to decide on an individual case by case. And if we're going to do it individually, then we can look at what's reasonable. Is it reasonable to have sidewalks here or not? We can't see the Leoy's after sidewalks. But we, don't we'll do it. but we don't do it. Tom. And we also had that when we were going to put a new street in, I&M project that you guys broke down. Yes, we did. They should have been there as well. And, and you guys... There's a new street, there was a new street coming off of South F. Sidewalks. A brand, and they're building houses today. Now that developer got by without it. And several other ones in this town have got by without it. Why are we picking on one man? I don't know if we're picking on him, but we were yeah, talking as sure a are. department today in the social studies department, and one of my colleagues asked, how come over by Edmondson they had some gravel road in town where he lives? And then I said, by the way, do you have sidewalks? And he was like, my house was built five years ago, and no, we do not have sidewalks. And I was like, well, are there any other sidewalks out there? And he was like, no. I said, well, if we pave your road, we're going to want you to have sidewalks. That's, that's for sure. And he said, well, I'd gladly pay for a sidewalk if I could get for that gravel road. But I thought five years ago, they all built those houses over by Edmondson. No sidewalks. So we have to decide as a council, are we going to be consistent? Or are we going to decide case by case uh, where it makes sense or it doesn't make sense? What are we going to do? 
Do you think you can get that decision tonight? No, I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, kind of what Aaron is saying, is it fair that we have a lot of people off the hook? It's not, it? but I, I think the simple thing for us, if you'd be willing to amend your motion, I would. Well, I would say, we will amend it to what you said the last time we had And I think it's the best case for everybody yes. here is yes. once conductivity comes through, they have to lay it. And that's between you know, the property owners and the developer to work out, not us. We shouldn't be requiring them to put a password <coughs> between them. I want to stay out of that fight. I mean, that's, they, they decide what they want to do. I can go with. So that way, everything, you know, when we decide to do it, fine. It's right there. It's right there. decides to put sidewalks in from south, of, from 11th Avenue West to their establishment, to their property, then they have to put them in. I, what, that's my motion. I will correct that to that. I'll, I'll second that. Uh, I'm from where? Okay. From 11th Avenue West, the Beacon Highway, when we put sidewalks all the way up to their property line, then they have to connect. Because okay. I think that, Andrew, that city property, we're going to put sidewalks on. You know, and they have a good point. I mean, Andrew Johnson made the point that he wants sidewalks out there. Mm -hmm. I think there's there's no reason. Yeah. Now maybe when it comes budget time, you know, I know that we're all tight on cash. Maybe that's something we need to look at. I have one more question to ask, Michael. Maybe you can answer. I remember this spring sometime when Mr. Boy was here asking to have the sidewalks waived, and I thought we voted on it then that no, we weren't going to waive That's correct. the yeah. sidewalks. That's right. So how has this changed? What is this doing before us again? Because it, yeah, it had to make a new site plan because he's making another, another unit out there on another lot. All right, so this is a whole new site plan that works. Yes, a whole new site plan. The site plan is reflecting, is reflecting what is actually constructed in the field. Right. So there were variations from what was originally submitted and approved by U.S. Council compared to what was built in the field. And so the request from the applicant is to reflect what was, what's actually there and then receive your approval on it. Otherwise, it's out of compliance. Mm -hmm. So our original vote that we took, when was that? February, March? Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, March 3rd. Yeah. March 3rd, yeah. okay. okay. Now the motion is reflecting only sidewalks. It's not saying anything regarding the uh, building that's in a different location, uh, the lighting plan and the culvert material. Um, this only has to do with sidewalks. So this only has to do with sidewalks. So with the council's agreement, we'll go ahead and vote on just that piece and then with the knowledge that we still have to go back and hit the other three. Okay, what's the vote going to be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's it going to be, Joe says? I'm for the sidewalks, but I agree with uh, what he mentioned earlier and, 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 and yourself. If, if there's a plan put in place for the future sidewalks around the park, and et cetera, if the homeowners, the funds for where they need to put sidewalks is set aside somewhere or how we work that out, some guarantee that those be put in okay. at a later date or you, what have you. In the absence of a guarantee. Well, can I, well, can I ask, can I ask yeah, a question? Maybe I of uh, Mr. Green, I believe it was. Is that correct? Yes. Could you come Is to the it, microphone, please? Yeah, yeah. Was it a unanimous by all six of the folks that bought it that they don't want the sidewalks now, but if we connect it, they will? As the statements, and all of them, all the homeowners signed the statement, which I gave to your clerk, stated that we support the planning and zoning. <coughs> recommendation not to have the site in place. The other alternative was if the council decides to place the sidewalk, we'd like a commitment from the council to extend that sidewalk to the west gate of the park, just the to the playground. Park, not to 11th Avenue. Not west. to 11th, just down to the, okay, the street, the west gate. That'll get the children to the playground. So they okay. can walk by your house. That's, they can walk by our house and on down. They do not have to walk in the street. Okay. Now, now to, piggy, to piggyback this here, and would you go along with, could we get a guarantee from your HSA that would say, when we come through with that, you guys will lay it? Because <laughs> that's what's going to happen. That's, that's what's what going to happen. Asking. They're going to want a guarantee well, that says, if there's a developer. That's really a loaded question based upon the developer, because as our six, six of us that own the properties now, I am sure in the purchase of those properties, we've already paid for that sidewalk. You have. <laughs> so therefore, so therefore, in, the in, that, in that original plan, the sidewalk was, is there. So if we're going to put the sidewalk in based upon that, we'd like an extension or a commitment from the council to extend that on down to the playground. Okay, so let me, let me put you on hold for a minute. What if we got it from the contractor? 
Would that yeah. be? I, I just want something. Would, would you we... be good with that? Yeah. If you guys could you come to the microphone too? Yeah. Okay, I'm Brian Boy, that was the owner of Phase One of Edmondson Drive. I wouldn't be willing to sign some kind of guarantee that if you would, as council, would come up to say we're going to connect this within the next couple years, that I would go ahead at my expense and put that sidewalk in there and connect that up. I have no problem with that. But I think looking at it, and that's what this whole thing has been a back and forth thing, and I've talked to a lot of council members about this. This comes down to whether you say, well, we need a sidewalk or not, but we've got to get into some common sense. If you go out and you look at it, it's more of a safety hazard to go in the ditch to get up onto that sidewalk if you force me and these people to have these walks there than it would be just to walk down the street. So what they're trying to say and I'm trying to say is if you guys are willing to hook up even from that west entrance of the park, I have no qualms about putting that walk in there. But I think it's just crazy that we're going to stub a section of walk in there and it, it starts at nowhere and ends at nowhere. And I think we need to, to do the same thing if we agree to put the sidewalk in first and then you connect like it might not be two years, it might be five years from now or ten years from now. Once the city of Oskaloosa agrees to put sidewalks in, that's when you'll put yours in. Yes, exactly. Okay. Because that's the motion that I made. But you said from 11th Avenue West, they're okay, saying the gate. <laughs> yeah, West Gate. You got carried You're just away. Just talking a few feet there. No, I'm First just I think it should go I want to know what the motion is. I, most sidewalks start uh, at a street. I understand. That's fine. I'll, I'll go with the, the west Wait, gate. The gate. Yeah. Well, that's blocked. Okay. Oh, yep, yeah. on up. <clears throat> I'm Wayne Hook, 205 Fairview Drive. This is a matter of information. I live in a subdivision that I did seriously indicate that we do have sidewalks. It was very clear with the, with the developer, it was right in the HOA or the agreement that the homeowners would be responsible for and would put sidewalks in with so, such a period of time. If the city council would take it upon themselves to put it somewhere back in their archives, that whenever a subdivision is made up, that that type of agreement would be made, you would satisfy and quit having this type of conversation. I believe it already exists. Yes. This development is not considered a subdivision. So those requirements don't come unless through the development process, staff and or planning and zoning or you as council require those things. Okay. It's not a, no, no, when it's not a subdivision. So if a, a single house, for example, we don't that do sort of thing. Yeah, we haven't done that on single houses. It's only been on multiple, multi-unit construction. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll try to make it brief. My concern about what we're talking about seems to be the backwards. As a past mayor and councilman myself, I'm in favor of sidewalks. That's my personal opinion. In this way that you're going about this, because if this builder that and, and contractor here in Oskaloosa, if something would happen, he goes out of business, whatever may happen in 10 years before that sidewalk's put in, uh, the homeowners may have to pay for that sidewalk that's supposed to be incurred because he may not be in business any longer. It seems to me if the council would agree to extend that down as we've talked about, if, if we're going to put the sidewalk in in front of those townhomes, probably the sidewalk should go in front of the si townhome first with the commitment from the council to put that in within a certain guaranteed time period. I suggested two years. It's all based upon budget. budget. I talked to Mr. Powell last Friday. Uh, when that money is there, maybe we extend that on down. It seems to me that we should put the sidewalks in prior to the city's commitment to a sidewalk. Therefore, you protect the homeowners. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what you want. You, you want to you want well, waive it or you want to put it in. We, I'm not sure if we can give you that commitment because I don't know where the money is going to be at this point. So what happens if, the, if we don't give you that commitment? We're very well, for sidewalk. well, I think the commitment that I've heard from the council tonight is that you want sidewalks throughout the city at some point in time, even if it's 100 years from now. Right. That all subdivisions should have sidewalks, and, and I believe that that should happen. 
the problem being that you're going to have to determine on that property that we live at that we've got a golf course to the south and we've got a, um, how do I explain it, Salt City Park, that the city's probably never going to subdivide that into residential housing. That's one of the problems that I have with the property itself in designing something like this. Uh, our, our concern is this, if we put the sidewalk in with no commitment from the city, we have a sidewalk that really doesn't do any good for anybody except for the six of us. So we need a commitment from the council to extend that down so it makes some sense for not only us, but we have children, for example, on 15th going across, school's just going to start. We have anywhere from four to 12 children to stand in the street to get on a school bus every morning. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not adverse to sidewalks, but we have to determine how you're going to develop that in that area. Now the children from Westview, for example, can come down to our sidewalks if you put the sidewalk in down to the playground and they can use the same sidewalk that we do. It just, it, it makes a lot of sense for our kids. All right, so let me ask this. I'm, I'm really is, any, is anybody up here waiting on you to put the sidewalk in and then have the develop, developer come back in five years and ten years and put it in? He may not be here. Well, I, I think that'd be, you would have to go negotiate with him to get that money into escrow now. And I think he'd be willing to do that. I think that'd be something that you guys but would need to talk about. I think I heard about. from Mr. Boyd that he's willing to do the, do right. the deal. Well, let's, let's talk about this from the other end that we haven't talked about. Anybody back and running sidewalks down to the park right now? Yeah, I'd sure. I'd sure love to look at it, yeah. I don't know how would we'd you pay give for it. Commit. You have to would commit in two years. Would I was not my agenda tonight. I can't commit to that. I don't think Listen, I, I can go either way here. I'll do whatever, you know, what they want to do. They've given us two options. I don't think if everybody's up here and you say, listen, let's let's go ahead and focus on trying to get it down for two years. I, I'm, the last I'm okay 50 or 60 years, the city has done this. We've got sidewalks to nowhere all over this town. And for us to sit here and say that we're going to put them in in two years, if he puts them in right now, it isn't going to happen. I can almost guarantee you that. I don't think so either, but I'll make it. It isn't going to happen. So I think we're better off to set him not put them in, and he, he puts them in after we do the sidewalk that we say we're going to do, whether it's two years from now or ten years from now. If he wants to put the money in escrow for their benefit, that's fine. But I don't think he should be putting the sidewalks in until we commit to it. Can we transfer funds out of the sidewalk program we have going on now? to get this little bit of strip done down to the entrance to the playground. Ask, well, that's a good suggestion. Uh, the amount of money that we put aside for sidewalks this year is about $15,000, so I don't think that's gonna come. I don't mean just this year. We had a, a long, longer strip <coughs> done, didn't we, Michael, on sidewalks? The Safe Routes to School program had um, projects and grants and funding as, uh, associated with it. This can become a priority if the council wants to make it a priority. Sure. And I guess that's, that's... I'm not sure I'm ready to make it a priority tonight. Um, we need to study that because there may be a bigger priorities that we need to do a better job. Just I guess my request would be if there's if this is going to be discussed, there are clearly needs for pedestrian connectivity along Edmondson and as well uh, to, to the fair uh, golf view development center. Yeah, yeah. 15th Avenue East West there, excuse me. Uh, there's about 230 feet from this development to the next sidewalk to the west. And so obviously we want to look at how that plays into additional construction. So if this council wants to make this a priority, you can make it a priority and it can get done two years or less. Uh, but you've got to shift things around in order to do that. Let's table this vote and mm -hmm. vote on the... Right what were you going to say, Kelly? Um, that, that's a safe route to school, and I don't know whether this will qualify because it needs to. I don't know whether DOT will approve it because it should right, be. Well, part of our plan, yeah. The safe route to school is dedicated to specifically linking up the sidewalks to the, the elementary school. Elementary and, and high, high school. school. And that's what I was Those for. funds. And those funds are obligated yeah. for. Yeah, right. You can't, you what if we table this part now? Go ahead and vote on one through four. Yeah. And then work, oh, this, work this back into this. We were going to meet and have a committee anyway. Yeah. That hasn't happened yet. Well, so. except we have a motion and a second. I know. Somebody would have to remove it. Or we have remove to remove or vote. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, you table it. It's only going to the next meeting. Yeah. So you want to vote clarify for me again. What is the motion? Yeah. <laughs> the motion is, as soon as the city puts their sidewalks in, 
from wherever you want to do it, from 11th or from the gate, then he will put his sidewalks in, whether it's two years, four years, 10 years down the road. It needs but to we be. But we have to put ours in first. Okay. Now, your concept, I, I get it, but we want to be specific enough. So are you talking from the gate or are you talking from the street? If they want from the gate, that's fine. Okay. I'll say from the gate. Okay. So the city would put in sidewalk first from the gate up to uh, up Tuscany? To his, right. Okay. And then, then he has to commit. Okay. And that's your understanding? By money and escrow. That's what it takes. He has to commit. Okay. Do you want to table this till next week? I just see what well, I just see what we're right working there. on a vote here. Yeah. Yeah. We got a motion and a second. Roll call, please. So what are we voting on exactly? <laughs> <laughs> that that they'll he'll have to put in a sidewalk once That's we right. put in our sidewalk. We go first. Yes. There's no timeline in the motion, is that right, Aaron? No, there is none. But the city has to put theirs in first. Roll call. Jimenez? No. Moore? No. Benzetton? Yes. First Day? Yes. Walling? Yes. Yates? No. Caligari? No. Okay. Motion fails 4 3. Going back, um, the request is the location of the building is moved, sidewalks uh, to the storage units extend to the property line to connect with the park, storage units lighting plan changed, and then the culvert material. Do we have a new motion? For those three only? For those four, well, four. for all four. For all four. No. It'd be fair. Oh, it'd be fair. Yeah. As yeah. presented. As presented, yeah. 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 As the applicant is So it, it still has the the sidewalks removed and then everything else that we have for So this would remove no. the sidewalks. No. sidewalks are, the applicant sidewalks. has presented it with the sidewalks in there. Sidewalks because in, I'm The sorry. last action by you as council is that they're required to be in by September 3rd, 2014. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I apologize for the error. Okay. Oh, that isn't one of the four things on here. Correct. That's so correct. Sidewalks we're waiving these four things. Yeah. We're approving, these. approving these changes. <laughs> yes. If you wanted to remove the sidewalks, that's a new stipulation. That'd be number five. Okay. The okay. I'm not sure how to word <laughs> this, but here's what I would make a motion. Here to approve. In. Yeah. See if we can get this anywhere close. Um, <laughs> Welcome back from vacation, by the way. <laughs> and approve, approve the site plan um, with the four changes, but give a 90-day extension on the September 3rd, 2014 date to put in the sidewalks to give all of us a chance to consider how we could handle this more effectively. Second. Good. That's the most wait, wait, yeah, yeah. Is 90 days gets you straight in the dead of winter. Yeah. He's not going to be able to lay sidewalks in the dead of winter. I'll give a 60 days. I'll I don't think you want to be laying sidewalks 90 days from now. So, so if you're wrong, would you consider then at that point removing those sidewalks? Or he could get it. Is that what you're thinking? I would like to think. <laughs> well, by okay. November uh, 15th, he could get them in. What is it? Six months. I'll say 60 days. You can still put sidewalks in by November 3rd. Again. I'll second well, Brian, will this second. give you a chance to move ahead with what you're wanting to do out there? Any further comments? And just to, to answer your question, Jason, yes, if we can come up with something good, then we can figure out potentially how to not put them in until it makes sense for everybody. Okay. Yeah. I think we just need to spend a little more time I, on trying to do it tonight. I guess are we able to do that? I, I mean, we can come back and relook at that. We're not tied to that vote for a certain amount of time or anything, are we? Okay, no. relook at what? Well, yeah, you'd have a 60-day clock yeah. that's ticking yeah. on that. No, so if we, we do nothing, we voted down removing. As of right now, they got to put those sidewalks. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And so, and six, let's say inside the 60-day period, we come back and look at it, and we say they don't have to do that. We're mm -hmm. not somehow tied to that vote. Tied to which vote? The vote we just made tonight about they have to put it in. I, I believe it or no, not he, because he would we have a 60 day clock ticking on it. In. That if we, we unless we say pull it out in the next 60 days, yeah. it would be in, in required. Right. Mm -hmm. so I want to work out. I want to work out something that's good for the community, good for the homeowners association, fair for the builder. Doesn't seem like unless we give ourselves a little more time, we're going to do that. 
This is the first tonight that we'd heard from the Homeowners Association. I wasn't sure where they stood. Yeah, and I'm still not sure. It sounds like they want sidewalks if they go on down and they don't want them, you know. Okay. Any other comments on Doug's motion? Roll call, please. Floor? I'm going to vote yes to Doug's suggestion. Ben Zetton? Yes. First day? Yes. Walling? Yes. Yates? Yes. Caligari? Yes. Jimenez? Yes. Okay, that passes. Moving on. 6B. Oh, yeah. To consider an ordinance to vacate and sell. <laughs> vacate and sell 120 foot by 16 and a half foot of the north south public alley adjacent to 211 North J Street. Second reading. Uh, Terry Wolfswinkle, owner of 211 North J, has requested that the portion of the north south alley adjacent to their property be vacated. Mr. Wolfswinkle owns both of the parcels, 211 North J Street and 1112 B Avenue West, adjacent to the requested alley vacate. The proposed alley has been paved with concrete when the chiropractic clinic was built in 2001. The city conducted a survey of households with direct access to this alley. Among the residents that responded, total of three, two of them wanted the alley to be vacated and one does not want the alley vacated. Gary Fisher, owner of Quality Car Wash located at 1101 A Avenue West, does not want this alley vacated because he indicated it will hinder future expansion of his business as the traffic exiting the car wash cannot have adequate access. The alley also contains Oskaloosa Sanitary Sewer, Mid-American Energy Utility Infrastructure, and MCG. G, hence easement rights will need to be retained for access to the above mentioned utilities. Planning and Zoning Commission considered this item at their July 12, 2014 meeting, recommending by a vote of 6-1, six, 6 yes, 1 no, that the City Council approve the alley vacation request. Commission member Holden Barnhart was opposed to the alley vacation. And so do we have a motion regarding this alley vacation? So moved. Second. Okay, this is to support the vacation, correct? Yep. Yes. Okay. Discussion. Um, <clears throat> that alley will need easements, as you just stated here, but also to help the two property owners. Uh, there's something they can do as far as the car wash. <clears throat> the owner of 211, he can put an, ease, uh, an easement also for that property owner to use the right of way of that alley. Can so you say that again? The car wash. They can work together and get an easement. I think that's called. Yeah, an easement. To where he can use access of that portion of of that alley. Okay. For what he does today, in other words. Okay. So that way they can't put block the aisle, uh, alley, if you will. Yeah. And they uh, couldn't build anything on the alley in the first place because of the utilities. Can. It's like sharing a driveway. You get it, the, the owner of the driveway will give an easement to the neighbor to use the driveway also. That's another option. Yeah. But there's not an easement in place no. currently. No. And Probably so not. the and council this property doesn't actually adjoin that alley. Oh, okay. Okay. But I did bring well, up it, that I would be willing to do something like that. An easement so that you I'm the one that's I would easement. Well I didn't say easement. I said something on paper is what I said to you this morning. He asked that something I on paper that that you would leave the alley open. I'm not opposed to Mr. Wolf's point the alley. That doesn't, I just don't want to close. And the only way that, it, that I would have any security over that is an easement or something of that nature where it would have to be, well, it would have to be a perpetual easement with, with the free flowing of traffic through there. And so that was. I didn't mean to bring that up. That was just a thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's not in place right now, so. Pardon? It's not in place now. No, it's not. You know. It has a need to be because the alley is Right. Okay. No, I meant you guys have not come to an agreement in, in as much as that taking place. <coughs> mm -hmm. May I make a comment? Yeah. 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 The easement, even if he added on to his current location, would not put him directly in front of the alley. He would still have to cross over my property to have access to that alley. Because um, with a seven foot um, set aside or setback. setback if you will there's no way that he can go directly into that alley um, but again the only, like I said to him the only time I'm going to block it right now hopefully I, I'm going to do it so he knows it is that when they're tearing down the old happy Joe's at the big dump trucks aren't going up and down the alley tearing up the concrete but other than that I have no plans of 
on closing it. However, if I would do something in writing a legal document that it would never be closed, I don't know who's going to buy that from him. That ties me forever, and that just that just creates a situation that I don't want to get in. But I have no intentions of closing it. But can't, can't you just do an agreement with him that doesn't go on to the next owner? That's not what he asked. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That was in case he would sell too, as well. Yeah. See, if he sells and the other owner, they have to okay. take an agreement on that. Yeah. There's no wins, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's the cart That's why it's for the horse. Yeah. yeah. So they need to work it out and bring it to us. You know, at this point, you, you, you don't close the alley until they get it worked out, and then you can do something. But here we are again. Well, you know, I went out and looked at it, and when you, you know, I, I get what you're trying to do, but when I, when you got the setback and everything in there, you do have to go around. I mean, it doesn't even make sense now how you're working in and out of there as it is so but, that, but you're you're taking into account they're just adding on a, an automatic bag but you don't have the room for that with the with the setback you only literally have maybe four or five feet that you could come off the side of your property that you could okay. feasibly build there am i understanding well, I haven't that checked with the engineer or anything like that and i haven't done those measurements because this came up rather, rather rapidly but with the pet bush that wouldn't be an issue because it'll be added on and it'll be done to city code and there will be, I can make it whatever dimensions I need to. Would the pet wash need vehicles to go through it? No, but it'll have to have parking that will be accessible from the alley because there's no other place to park. It might be on the west side. I'm just trying to figure okay. out this logically. I, I, I understand what you're trying to say, but when you look at the setbacks and what has to happen with code, it's just almost impossible for you to do it given what he owns. Mike, can you go back to the uh, top view on that? Can we zoom in a little bit there? That's static. Oh, all right. Uh, even when you come out of there, you see that corner up there. He's got the entire block. If he took a left, He's got that, so you'd almost have to go up two feet, make an immediate left, go another two feet, and then make another right up there. I mean, he has that corner. So for you to even come out of there logistically with a car would be a nightmare. And given the setback, I mean, I, I want to see you built. I mean, I, I'm just looking at this logically here, looking at the setbacks. It doesn't work with the configuration that you have currently. Okay, but you're using the me putting another bay in there. But even if you wanted to put a pet wash in there, you could still come off five feet. You wouldn't get a carf through there. And that alley still yeah. wouldn't be. But you still have the alley to the south. So the alley to the south is open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I didn't think there was room for it. But as we kind of look at the picture, I'm not sure how to make this work. Well, you can see my utility shed there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Probably two parking slots that would be accessed from the alley. It would angle into that. Otherwise, they'll interfere with the automatic that's there. And when those people come out of there, they can go straight on out to the north, out through that alley. And with it, the setback requirements, if you added that in there, you'd be parking <coughs> cars literally in the alley. I mean, you don't have you don't have the requirements from the code standpoint that meets that. I mean, you're only talking. I think it's like 10 feet from the side of your. That's the problem. You've got such a narrow side there to the alley that we wouldn't have any of those setback requirements to do what you're wanting to do. Well, I think it's 15 feet there, if I'm not mistaken. Could, could be. I mean, I, I might I be know, all, you know. I don't know if, that's, if that is, if it needs to be more. I don't know that. That's something that we would have to run by the engineer. When I was um, looking at parking and I talked to Akilish, I think I was required to have at least 18 feet for a parking space, correct? 18 is the length, the right. width is 9 feet. But the length has to be at least 18 feet. So for him to angle into that from the alley, you wouldn't have what would be the minimum feet that he would need? The, the width, I'm assuming closer to it, 16 to 18 feet. He doesn't have I don't have the numbers, there's a table what? for that angle, but 16 feet, I'm... And does setback requirements apply to parking? Angle parking? Yes. I. I don't think so, you know, but I'll verify and that. That would be a site plan review item that, that we would want to look at with the pins, the survey work, and right. ensure that 
that he has enough development. It would be difficult, I think is a yeah. fair statement, to accomplish what was, has been suggested. Well, what if they were parked, if they were pulled straight in, if they weren't angled? Again, that's finance on me. Like in the in the grass strip there in front of it. Yeah. Park there, and then you're saying they back up and head out north out both alleys. Correct. Mm -hmm. There would be there other considerations. Yeah, I understand. I'm just I mean, there are a lot of other considerations that go into. Yeah. I mean, this is a P and Z item. If we vote to, to vacate, any probability or options he has are going to be gone. That's correct. Right. That's my own fear. Is what, in what order we do it? it in terms of we're, we're evaluating this before we know what those <coughs> options are. Mm -hmm. And I'm all for vacating the alley, but I'm also, I don't want to hear Mr. Fisher from expanding his business. But if the site plan didn't <coughs> fit what he wanted to do, right. there'd, be, then there'd be no reason. So, I agree. Um, that's what, that's what we don't have. Oh we I mean, uh, how far away is that logistically for you? It wouldn't happen this fall. It would happen next spring. I couldn't get to see that work in the last September. Hmm. I mean, it, it's just... We've got one more reading to go after this one. Well, that worked out. I don't know how long it would take to get a site plan to see if that was even feasible. I mean... <laughs> I'm in favor of, at this point, saying, yeah, um, I can go with vacating the alley until I see otherwise that what you want to do, as long as it meets code, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't vacate that alley as long as what you're trying to propose meets code. If it meets code, then I think we're all saying the same thing. No, we'll, we'll leave it open. Well, I'm not sure that that can all be done before the next reading. And if you guys say to vacate the alley by then, then I'm out of luck. I have no other options. So if he doesn't intend to close the alley anyway, um, why does it need to be vacated? One call for the question. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Roll call, please. Ben Zetton? Yes. First day? Yes. Walling? No. Yates? No. Caligiuri? Yes. Jimenez? No. Moore? No. Okay, that fails. 4-3. Moving on, item C. Public hearing section. Consider an ordinance amending the city's natural gas franchise agreement with MidAmerican Energy Company and increasing the existing natural gas franchise fees by an additional 2% of the company's gross revenues for all service classes and amending the city's revenue purpose statement for the use of franchise fee revenues. So, uh, the current 25-year natural gas franchise agreement with MidAmerican Energy was approved and renewed by the city council in 2011. At the time of renewal, a significant change was made to the franchise fee amount charged on the company's gross revenues. The change was an increase from 0.2% for all classes to 3.0% for all classes, except industrial, which was increased from 0.2% to 1.5%. The increase in revenues was specifically earmarked for infrastructural improvements as specified in the Iowa Code. The increase in the franchise fee was completed as an alternative to issuing debt paid by property taxes for an, uh, several needed infrastructural improvements. The decision resulted in a lower tax burden for the average property tax owner in the city. City Council is now considering an additional 2% increase to the existing franchise fee rates and an expansion of the allowable uses for the revenue derived from the franchise fees collected. The 2% increase in fees is estimated to generate an additional $290,000 of revenue and bring the annual revenue for gas and electric franchise fees to $685,000. The additional revenue would be used in a manner acceptable to the City Council through the currently approved revenue purpose statement or an amended version of that document. Initial discussions with the City Council during study sessions indicates a desire to use the revenue to offset the impact associated with the recently approved property tax reform legislation by the Iowa Legislature, Senate File 295, and pay for costs to provide public safety services within the community. 
The increase in fees can be accomplished through an amendment to the franchise agreements with the Mid-American Energy Company and procedurally, the City Council is required to hold a public hearing to accept comments from the public on the proposed franchise amendment. So now's the time for the public hearing to consider the ordinance amending the franchise agreement. Uh, let's see here. The franchise fee is imposed upon and shall be collected from the natural gas customers of the company receiving service pursuant to tariff and located within the corporate limits of the city. Franchise fees shall be imposed upon gross receipts minus uncollectible accounts derived from the sale of natural gas and distribution services pursuant to the tariff. City imposes the franchise fee and then it lists out the percentages as I've read earlier. So I'll open the public hearing at this time. Is there anyone who would care to speak on this? increase in the natural gas franchise agreement. One would conclude by the minimum amount of average people here to speak to this proposed increase to the franchise tax that this is a hidden tax imposed upon the poor because they frankly aren't aware of it. I picked it up because of my prior experience as a councilman I'm just watching the hearing. I didn't see any headlines in the paper like it was when the franchise fee was increased from what it was prior to what it is now. If we're using these for improvements, I guess I have one question. One thing I heard bannered around was the money for the YMCA. Right now, I went to the northwest corner Sunday, a town, and I see a brand new street extended on North Green Street to nowhere. And now we're concerned about raising the franchise fee to the poor and particularly to, to provide the money, hopefully, to the YMCA to keep its pool going, which is a, a facility that's open 24-7 to the poor, the general public, and et cetera. What I see out there is somewhat of a memorial, I must frankly say, to someone. What I'd also conscious you is going back to say that we spent $750,000 during my term as mayor to upgrade the city park. When you put those kind of improvements in a community, just not unlike when it goes to the church and somebody puts a great big, great grand thing in their endowment or their will to the church, the click is or the glitch is the city or the church has to continue to maintain that project. So I would warn you, first of all, I guess I've said enough. If I haven't convinced you, it's too bad. Thank you. City Council. Um, I submitted a letter uh, to the mayor. Uh, hopefully it's been distributed to the, the rest of the city council. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and read it. Hopefully you've had a chance to read it, but just, just for public record, go ahead and read it and then uh, make a couple of comments on that. As a local economic development corporation in Mahaska County, the Mahaska Community Development Group has a core purpose of developing and maintaining a vibrant and business-friendly community. To have a place where businesses and residents can thrive and grow involves a wide spectrum of issues. Two of those issues include high quality municipal services and low tax burdens. The proposed 2% increase to the gas and electric fee franchise fees is directly related to these two issues. It is within this context that MCDG would like to express its opinion on the proposed fee increase. As you, Mayor, and the City Council are well aware, Municipal services are supported primarily through local taxes. It is MCDG's understanding that the recently passed state property tax reform, while applauded for reducing the tax burden on Iowa businesses, has created financial problems for, for municipalities across the state, including Oskaloosa. Looking at the long-term imp implications of the property tax reform, it is clearly not feasible, financially feasible, for the city of Oskaloosa to sit idle in regard to revenues while still delivering the same level of service. Therefore, MCDG is appreciative of the proactive considerations and analysis that the city has conducted. On the other hand, MCDG encourages the city to be cautious in its consideration of additional taxes. While not stated as a tax, it must be understood that the franchise fee is simply a tax on usage. Before increasing taxes, it is important for governments to pursue internal efficiencies where feasible. MCDG strongly, strongly encourages the city to implement those cost savings, saving opportunities that will save taxpayers money while limiting disruption to municipal services. With the above considerations in mind, it is MCDG's position that 
the increase in the franchise fees is a prudent step in response to the fiscal implications created by the state property tax reform and in order to maintain quality municipal services. MCDG supports the City of Oskaloosa's propo proposal to add an additional 2% to the gas and electric franchise fees. Um, just uh, in, in stating that, just kind of three points. Uh, first, we do appreciate um, the, the proactive stance. I know that um, the full impact of the um, state property tax reform is, is still yet to hit us, and I know you're being pressed constantly for budget issues. Um, the YMCA was mentioned, um, certainly an important part of the community. Um, so we appreciate that. Uh, I know the discussion has also been in context of uh, where there can be cost savings um, for the municipality, and I think that's an important conversation to be having at the same time when you consider additional fee increases. And then, then lastly, um, MCDG, as you all know, um, includes um, many of the significant um, or um, larger um, businesses uh, around town, and so the, the franchise fee will certainly have a, a significant impact um, on those businesses. And uh, they don't come to this, this letter um, lightly. We had a very spirited debate about it, um, but in the end felt like this was a, um, a necessary step um, or, or seemed prudent for the city council to um, pursue this. So that's all I had. Andrew, I have a question. Yep. Can we assume, or you can help us here? Yep. Everybody that's on MCDG, yes. was it unanimous they approved? What we're saying in that letter? Uh, yes, there was no votes against. Other questions of Andrew? Okay, thank you. Yep. Well, I guess I just have a statement about stuff is that as Doug and I discussed earlier, you know, we either do this or we're going to cut services someplace down the line or cut whatever else we're going to try and get done with this city and make the city a better place. And, <coughs> and across the board, 2%. It's not picking out individuals or anything of that nature. It's 2% across the board on everybody. So, <coughs> Michael, I'd like to ask one question just to make sure that I'm understanding it <coughs> um, because we all read different things. The property tax reform bill included backfill for a period of time for our communities. At a late stage in the bill, they added multifamily housing. Is that correct? And they created a new classification. They created a new classification, multifamily. multifamily housing. And for that section, they did not include backfill. Is that correct? Correct. <coughs> That is what's creating this gap because there's a misconception out there, as was touted in a lot of the papers, particularly by a lot of people, um, that it backfill. Why do we have this problem? And I just want to make sure that we recognize there was sections <coughs> of the bill that did not have the full backfill, or at least that multifamily housing. Yeah, there were, there were multiple divisions of that that bill, and the rollback for industrial commercial users, <coughs> which is 10 percent that carries uh, a backfill with it, and that doesn't necessarily carry 100% of the right. backfill. I was say, they didn't guarantee and, and there is no guarantee to that. Uh, the, the state has a history of not funding obligations that it commits to <coughs> and ultimately impacts our budget. The 411 retirement system for public safety is a huge example, and that's a dollar for dollar tax on our residents. Um, so, a little bit off my soapbox there, but the the idea is that um, in 20, I think it's 2017 or 2018, that backfill gets locked in for the industrial commercial, and then every year after, if there's a new development or, or change of classification, there's no backfill associated with that. Uh, but the biggest hit's going to come with that new classification called multifamily. It did not get included there's, with backfill. There's no backfill for that. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments or questions? This is something that I just can't support. Um, we get, uh, we're taxed on income, we've got sales, we've got property tax, we've got cash <coughs> tax. Um, now we've got the franchise fee, our water rates are going to be going up. And basically we started talking about this because we needed to fund the Y and we needed to got Forest Cemetery. 
we have no plan for the Y at all right now. None. So for me to sit here and say we're going to raise taxes without a plan, I can't do that. I have a lot of problems with that. You know, Wayne was making some mention about some of the poverty. You know, one of the things that still continuously jumps out at me, as defined by the 1015, one in four people in Oskaloosa make under $13,000 a year. One in four people. That is huge. We have a huge poverty problem, and we're not attacking that. Um, state level is about 12%. We're at about 23 You know, We have a lot of things to consider, and I just can't go along with raising taxes, raising taxes, raising taxes. Mike did a good job. He put a whole bunch of stuff on there that said, hey, you know what, there are about 10 or 15 items that we could cut. We didn't really get into having some really deep discussions about cutting, you know, and I'm just going to and I'm, I'm looking at these guys. We we'll just take the police budget about you know 1.7. Could we cut that back to 1.5? <coughs> Scale back some of these to address that. You know, if we didn't have Forest Cemetery and we didn't have the Y, how were we going to make up what the state was doing? I mean, the state was cutting taxes to promote business. I think that's what we ought to be doing is working with the state to do that. And I feel like the first response that we had was, well, we have the franchise fee. We have some areas there that we can go grab and well we've got some space so we'll just do it. So before I would go <coughs> along with this, I'd like to have, you know, deeper discussions about what could we really, really cut and what would we give give up. And I guess my view on that, Jason, is I agree we need to be doing both. I don't I don't feel the discussions about what we could cut were quite as limited. We didn't make <coughs> decisions, but we'll have to make those decisions in the coming budget period. I know that. Um, to me this is part of it. I don't go into this thinking this is the entire answer. I know we're going to have to cut some things. I think this is a necessary step as well. That's my view. We do have a motion, don't we? No. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. I'll close the public hearing at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hook, do you have something else? <laughs> I have a couple questions, and I know before I ask the first one that you probably don't know the answer. But first, we talk in terms of the YMCA. We have what they call the Mahaska Community Recreation Foundation. Does anybody know how many funds <coughs> have gone to the YMCA or to other uses? Seeing your blank faces, I understand that to be a no. The second thing that I'd bring up that I didn't think that I would probably bring up because I'll probably do a shabby job of explaining it, but if there is no so-called backfill to the multi unit housing, which means there's no tax credit coming back to the multi-unit housing. Is this correct? <coughs> the assessed per rollback is going to progressively drop to the residential value level. So it won't affect the multi-unit the multi -unit housing won't be a rollback? The rollback will equate to the same amount, whereas it would be 100% now, it will end up being close. it will be the residential value. What I would submit to you concerning the multi-unit housing <laughs> is that we all share concern about the corridor of North Market and A Avenue East and North Market in particular. I've heard this at chamber meetings for 40 years. I've heard that at council meetings for this approximately the same number of years. But the properties aren't well kept. They're kind of run down. There aren't adequate care given to them. One thing I would submit to you, which is a quote unquote, maybe a real estate term, is called a rental advantage. Have you ever heard of the term? Rental advantage is where you have a situation where you have low cost housing that is in either somewhat poor condition and isn't kept up to its top, which refers to those type of properties as being typical that if the, la the landlord has a quandary, in particular the landlord has a quandary which, and I've been in a lot of them, I've managed a lot of them, where they have one central heating system and they have two or three apartments. It's 10 below zero outside. The upstairs tenant is just hotter and blazes so he throws all the windows open. The downstairs tenant all of a sudden feels like he's kind of cold for some reason so he's got thermostat and he jacks it up. So then you have a situation where the landlord has to pay out of control utilities 
but because of the nature of the second class citizen type apartment that he owns, he cannot raise his rents or he'll lose all his tenants. So if you increase the utilities on those specific properties, I would submit to you, and it's not entirely the reason, but I would submit to you that you will make it harder for these so-called landlords, I've had another term used over the years, but I won't use it here, these so-called landlords will be further strapped to maintain their properties. And I thank you for your attention. I have a question. Is there anyone else who would care to speak? Okay, now, now we're officially closed on the public hearing. Now we need a motion uh, to, to trigger the regular discussion. Um, we have a motion in favor of amending the city's natural gas franchise agreement with Mid-American. So moved. Second. Okay. Now discussion. Okay. In light of what Jason says, and I think it's a good point, but I want to make sure that people know we're not doing this franchise fee to fund the Y. We're doing the franchise fee to come up with some discretionary funds to take care of this backfill money that we're not going to have, that we're going to need in the future. Is that correct, Michael? Mm -hmm. I'm on your perspective. Yeah, it's look, on at, the look at the next, it's the very next agenda item. Yeah. And that we're going to now amend the franchise fee so we can give the Y money. Mm -hmm. oh. Mayor Council, the way that this was presented Where was over the last couple of months, we've received requests that have called them to question whether or not the city can assist or help fund operations for both oh, Forest Cemetery and uh, the YMCA. The animal shelter has been discussed multiple times. Uh, no one has attended those workshops where we talked about those or those study sessions, but uh, it became very clear that not only those requests were going to be a problem for us uh, going forward because property tax reform is looming. Regardless, <coughs> if the YMCA's request goes away tomorrow, we or still cemeteries need request goes away tomorrow, we are still going to be faced with financial tough, very tough financial decisions uh, you as a group would have to make. Now, that's a, you're all that was a question I was asking. Now or whatever it is, but yeah, it, it, this we are going to be facing a change. All cities in Iowa are going to be facing a change for revenue uh, receipts and collection in the next five years, and there are going to be similar conversations occurring across every city, trying to figure out how do you generate additional revenue or cut expenses or both. Uh, and, and so we're not the first; we won't be the last. And I was completely the same understanding that Doug was that we are going to make those decisions later on when we come up the next budget session. We are going to make those cuts. We're going to have to make some cuts anyway. Does, does an increase to the franchise fee provide additional revenue to, to maybe make additional decisions short term? Yes. Mm -hmm. and I think that answers your question, so I apologize I didn't answer your question. Mm -hmm. um, it provides additional flexibility, and I think that's what you as council have requested that staff identified options, and that's what we've done. Other comments or questions? Roll call, please. First day? No. Walling? No. Yates? Yes. Calajuri? Yes. Jimenez? Yes. Moore? Yes. Okay. Ben Zetton? No. Okay, that passes. So beyond item D, considering an ordinance amending the city's electric franchise agreement with MidAmerican Energy Company, increasing the existing gas and electric franchise fees by an additional 2% of the company's gross revenues for all service classes, and amending the city's revenue purpose statement for use of franchise fee revenues. There's an extensive explanation that is uh, verbally identical to what we were doing for natural gas, so I'll avoid uh, rereading that. Uh, this is the opportunity for a public hearing on that, however, so I'll open the public hearing if anyone would care to speak to the electric side of this. Just to go on record, the letter that was submitted um, from the MCDG's perspective, support um, for both gas and electric, just to state that. Just go on, I just want to go on record also, uh, Wayne Hook, in opposition to increasing the franchise fee based on it being a secret tax to the poor. You've heard enough from me. Thank you. Anyone 
Anyone else care to speak? I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. We have a motion for approval of the electric franchise agreement increase. It's moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Walling? No. Yates? Yes. Calajuri? Yes. Jimenez? Yes. Moore? Yes. Ben Zetton? No. Versteg? No. Okay, that passes. Moving on. Uh, item E. Consider a resolution approving and adopting a revenue purpose statement for the use or expenditure of fee revenues from proposed natural gas and electricity franchise fees. In the consideration of approving an increase to the natural gas and electric franchise fees charge, state statute requires the city outline the use or expenditure of fee revenues in a document called a revenue purpose statement. The following are areas identified as allowable expenses to identify for the revenue statement, and the council can choose one or several or all of them. Um, item A would be property tax relief. Uh, B would be the repair, remediation, restoration, cleanup, replacement, and improvement of existing public improvements and other publicly owned property, buildings, and facilities. C is the projects designed to prevent or mitigate future disasters as defined in section 29C.2. Uh, D is the energy conservation measures for low income owners, low income energy assistance programs, and weatherization programs. Item E is public safety, including the equipping of fire, police, emergency services, sanitation, street, and civil defense departments. Item F, which is one of them that we currently do, is the establishment, construction, reconstruction, repair, equipping, remodeling, and extension of public works, public utilities, and public transportation systems. And also item G that we do, uh, the construction, reconstruction, or repair of streets, highways, bridges, sidewalks, pedestrian underpasses and overpasses, street lighting fixtures and public grounds, and the acquisition of real estate needed for such purposes. Item H is on the list. We don't do that one currently. Property tax abatements, building permit fee abatements, and abatement of other fees for property damaged by disaster, as defined in Section 29C.2. Or item I, uh, economic development activities and projects. So as I mentioned, we presently use uh, city revenues as outlined in letters F and G. However, staff is recommending the city council approve a revenue purpose statement that we've got attached here that identifies letters E, F, G, and I as allowable uses for franchise fee revenues. So E was the one that had to do with public safety, equipping of fire, police, emergency services, sanitation, street, civil defense departments. Uh, and item I is economic development activities and projects. So do we have a motion regarding this? And that's for D, F, G, and I. Yeah, proposal from staff is E, F, G, and I. So moved. Second. <coughs> Discussion. So this is where we're actually amending the fee that we can now redistribute those franchise fees to these other areas. Is that correct? Yeah, they had to go in a certain order. So more specifically, this is so we can give the Y money. Won't we have to vote on that? Won't that come as a vote? Yeah, that will come separately, but this is on here because we're specifically doing this to shift towards the Y. Is yeah. that and correct? That's, that's, again, there, there really hasn't been a plan, and I, I've said this several times, I am absolutely for a recreational facility. Uh, but what was presented to us at $200,000 a year for the next three years to me is unacceptable. I want to go after a new recreational building and work that route. When we vote on something like this, it seems like because we can do it, we will do it, and we're just going to pass on that money because we did it, and we're not going to take the time to really do it and do it right. So at this particular point, because there's such lack of a plan and direction on this, uh, I just can't move forward with this. I would remind the council that the YMCA uh, definitely has recreational things that it does, uh, but it also is a child care provider in town. And so there are many, many parents with young children who depend on the YMCA to be viable. Uh, and as employers, we would uh, want our employees to have good child care in order to be good employees. Um, other comments? 
Well, I would want to ask Michael, this isn't a vote on the YMCA. This, no. this is a vote on amending how we will spend the money, correct? Or how we can spend the money? How it, correct. correct. Okay. It's a short answer. It gives you the legal authority on, on being able to spend it within those categories. As I've mentioned before, those, those financial decisions are made either during the budgeting process or through a separate agenda item brought to you. And we're very open and transparent about that. There were, as you recall, a number of concerns about how I would present the use of the funds to you as a group uh, when, when the consensus was road improvements. We dedicated all of the franchise fees essentially to road improvements. And that's talked about during the budgeting process. I think. Again, what we're presenting to you tonight as staff is that this is the maximum flexibility. Obviously, you can adopt all of those, but uh, the items that we, we have recommended, they fit more in line with the priorities and objectives that you as council have talked about multiple times. And so, while yes, there have, there have been discussions about the YMCA, there have also been discussions about making improvements to the streetscape along A Avenue. There have been discussions about demolishing properties. Those are all economic development ideas. Uh, I don't necessarily want you to lose sight of the, the macro, the larger picture of what we're, we're trying to accomplish here within the city. Um, yes, there are going to be discussions about the why, but bigger picture is that there could be other items that, that change your priorities and change the funding source in the screen. You know, when I ran, I, I fought this franchise fee when I ran, and for those of you that voted for it when it went through, I thought one of the major sales that we weren't going to tap into this thing to start using it for other areas. It was going to stick to roads. Many of you read, said, hey, we got to go fix the roads. We're going to stand behind the franchise fee, and the franchise fee is going to go to roads. Well, here the state cuts. We're not going to make any cuts, but now we're going to go raid the franchise fee to pay for other areas right now. So I, I just, if we're going to use the franchise fee and we're going to stand on it, fine, let's keep it to roads and let's keep it pointed. Let's not go rob the piggy bank to pay something else off right now. We've got to start to say no somewhere, and we have yet said no to anything, and it's put us in a situation. Other comments? The proposal is to do E, F, G, and I in the purpose statement. Roll call, please. Yates? Yes. Calgary? Yes. Jimenez? Yes. Moore? Yes. Ben Zetton? No. Verste? No. Walling? No. Okay, it passes. Item F. Consider a resolution calling a special city election for the purpose of issuing bonds not to exceed the amount of $3,195,000 for the purpose of reconstructing, enlarging, improving, equipping, and furnishing the fire station. Uh, this item is a culmination of ongoing conversations between the city council, staff, and the public, and the city's architectural firm. This item provides staff with the necessary direction to place a ballot question to the voters of Oskaloosa on November 4th, 2014, seeking their approval on the issuance of a maximum amount of $3,195,000 in bonds to complete the fire station number one construction project. The ballot proposition included with this item must receive a favorable vote of at least 60% of those voting in order to be approved as required by section 384.26 of the Iowa Code. The amount mentioned above and the ballot question being submitted to the votes does not include the borrowing necessary to, to acquire a new fire apparatus that is requested by the department and that's an anticipated to cost $300,000. Additional details of the fire station number one construction project can be found uh, below. There's detail here uh, and attached to this item. However, in a short, the proposed fire station project includes both new construction to enlarge the existing facility and renovation of the existing space to better accommodate fire and emergency management services. The facility's construction is anticipated to cost $2,940,000 and will take approximately 20 to 24 months to finish if the voters approve a ballot measure in November of 2014. So there's quite a bit of detail here about uh, the various uh, changes that are going to be made to it. Uh, including detail as to various other funding options that we have considered. And it goes into, um, you know, talking about whether or not we wanted to use TIF, whether we wanted to use local option sales tax, whether we wanted to get involved with uh, various grants that uh, as they come up, we wouldn't say no to any of those. Um, 
And so in general, uh, I, I guess that the item here is to, to say that we have looked at all other ways and decided that this is the best way to go. Uh, do we have a motion supporting the resolution calling for the election regarding this vote? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? <clears throat> this is one of the areas I think we could probably look back on and say we haven't looked at all the different areas. I'm, I'm all for letting it go to a vote of the people. I have no problem with that at all. But there's been a couple of comments that were made by this council, and I'm beginning to agree with them. But it's a lot of money to house a truck. And I'm not too sure that we need to build on to the existing building. I'm not too sure that we can't use the existing building the way we use it now and say build another building, a pole barn on cement or somewhere on the west end of, on the west side of the tracks. To house the equipment. To house the rest of the equipment. And have two fire stations, I think it would be a lot cheaper than three point almost two million dollars. So I don't really again I'm not against going to the people. I think it should go to the people for a vote, but I'm not sure that this is the way we should be going. We just went through a bunch of talk about how we need to cut back. This is one area we could do it. Other comments? I have a question I have for Michael. <coughs> By approving this this evening, we're saying we're going to a vote to Aaron's comments or, or others. If the scope would change for whatever reason and it would come in at less dollars, you know, we're going to the vote asking for $3.195 million. Does that change if, if we can do the project for less than that, or the project scope changes, or, or or is the vote or what we're asking for taking this whole package together as is, including the drawings that's included in here and and everything? What what flexibility do we have? I think as staff we presented uh, what we expected U.S. Council based on our previous discussions, to ask the voters to approve and fund. Uh, if there were scope changes, we want to see those done before the bonds are issued. No, I agree with the bonds. Uh, I was meant before the vote, because we can't issue the bonds after the vote anyway. Right. Bonds can be issued any time after the vote, though, right? Correct. So there's time, like Doug was just saying, if we change the scope or something, then... But where we're at right now okay. is that the language, the ballot language is due to the assessor, or to, excuse me, the county commission uh, by the end of this month. And so I didn't, based on our previous discussions, expect there to be different scope changes. Um, I'm actually quite surprised by the discussion tonight. So. Uh, and again, I will state for my, I didn't anticipate potentially that level of scope change that, that Aaron talked about, but any scope change, I'm just asking what our flexibility is. If we decided not to do a small piece of it even, they took Two hundred thousand right. dollars out. Do we have that option? We do. We'd have to work through our bond council on that. I mean, that's that's because the voters are approving a certain amount. If you've issued the debt, you've got to spend the, the the dollars on that project. We would have to get through that. So I can't give you a detailed response on if the bonds have been issued and we decide to mothball the the third floor. Good example. Okay. And can we do that then? The voter didn't say why well, voted for this. We could, but I'd really encourage the council to figure that out before the bonds were issued. Yeah, yeah. Well, I agree. If they put it to the voter, letting the voters vote it down, to tell us you've got to go back and replan, redraw. If they vote it down, if that's correct. Right. Right. Yep. That could be that, one takeaway. Yes. Way. I think people need to be calling us, telling us what we're doing here, asking us questions, and that might be the way to force us to look at something different. Well, if it doesn't pass. If it doesn't pass. If it passes, then I guess we're saddled in. I'm all for the vote, but I'm not sure I want to go this route. Okay. Any more comments on the vote? Yeah, I thought, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Mr. Mayor. All right, all right. Hearing none. Roll call, please. Calgary? Yes. Jimenez? Yes. Moore? Yes. Ben Zenton? Yes. Versteg? Yes. Walling? Yes. Yates? Yes. Okay, that passes. Okay, item G. Consider a resolution approving a motion to submit to the voters of the city of Oskaloosa at special public election the question of whether to discontinue the Oskaloosa Municipal Water Board. Uh, this item was specifically requested to be on the agenda by Council Members Van Zetten and Jimenez. Um, the Oskaloosa Municipal Water Board was created by a vote of the citizens of Oskaloosa in 1922. 
Oskaloosa City Ordinance 2.80.100 provides that a proposal on motion of the council to discontinue a utility board is subject to the approval of the voters of the city. Iowa State Code Section 388.2 from 2013 likewise provides that a proposal of a city to establish or discontinue the operation of a city utility is subject to the approval of the voters of the city. Council members have, a re have requested that an item be placed on the agenda for the City Council to consider a motion to submit to the voters of the City of Oskaloosa, Iowa at public election the issue of whether to discontinue the Oskaloosa Municipal Water Board. We have a motion supporting this. Second. Okay, discussion. I think just for the record, uh, obviously I asked to put this on, but when we look at everything in a whole, and I know all of you understand this, but you know, that board has basically blown through just about a million bucks. They didn't really need to, between $500,000 on a building where they could have came down here. Um, they gave their 27% pay raise to their manager. Um, they're increasing rates 10% this year, 5% subsequently after that for the next four years. You saw the legal argument that they put forward um, to the people that I think was, was really irritating and they continue to you know, do things like buy free lunches for their employees. I know it's a minor thing, but at this point, when we've spent $100,000, and I'm just gonna piggyback what Aaron was saying uh, last time on about the firehouse. People need to step up and make a decision and let us know which direction to move forward with. So that's why I'm supporting this. I don't dispute or disagree with, with anything you set up to the, uh, the very last point. I, I agree with all those comments you made of the things that were done uh, that I certainly didn't agree with. I guess the question that I have now is, is based upon the, the recent legal decisions, uh, appointed one new board member. Um, do not we as a council want to take the opportunity to try and work with uh, the new board and see if we can figure out a way to work together to to go go forward versus taking this and trying to abolish a board that's been in existence and maybe in the past has worked very effectively. I mean, at, at any point, if we find that we can't work with that board, particularly with the new members, uh, we can always have an election. I mean, we don't have to wait. We can have a special election. It'll cost minimal dollars for a, for a major item, but I, I, I just feel that uh, we need to set the example and figure out a way to work with them if we can. Um, short of calling for a vote right now, I'm just not sure that I, I don't see the urgency to go with a vote at this point. I think there's the opportunity for us to work with the water board and still address the issues that you've outlined. They're very clear issues, and I don't disagree with a single one of them. Um, I'm just not sure with the recent legal decision why this is now a pressing item. Well, I, I'm going to piggyback that a little bit because we're talking about sewer services, and I think probably one of the best things that we're going to do to save money is start combining our wastewater service and our water board together. I mean, to pay a water board manager 85, 85,000, roughly 87,000, and then to go pay a sewer guy, last I heard was around 90,000. You know, we're putting a tax burden, about 200,000 that we can combine those areas. So I think it's a, it's a smart time to ask the voter which direction they want to go, because we have both these things on the table. And I think it helps out and says, you know, one, we know where we're at financially. I mean, again, we're talking about, you say that you want to move forward and you want to make cuts. This is an area that if we combine two departments into one and we eliminate two staffs and make one, we can, we can make some hay there. And, and, and this is an opportunity for us to do it. And I'm just saying, that's all I'm saying. I'm saying it's, let's put the option out there. And if they say no, we know which way, you know, which direction to go. But, and, and I guess I want to go on record. I 100% agree with you. I think we need to look for all those cost-cutting opportunities. I just don't know that we can not accomplish them still working together with that board. If between us and that board agree on policies of ways that we can make the type of decisions you stated and, and a variety of other ones, I think that opportunity exists. If we can figure out as a group how to work together with a council and a board and we can set a way to do that, maybe it's set a heck of a precedence for how we can work together with the county, you know. But we got to figure out how to work together and it's not always in my mind going to be to abolish it and take it over. Um, 
So if we can figure out a method or a process to work with that water board and show that it can be done, again, that could set a great example of how to do it potentially with the county as well. So I, I just don't want to, I'm not opposed to doing this when the time is right. I don't feel that the time is right, but I do want to make sure I go on record. The things you've stated, why we're looking at the issues with the water board, why we need to get to making cuts that you're talking about, 100% agree, Jason. Well, I should have spoke before Doug did because he just pretty took much all the glory. But uh, I totally agree with what you just said, Jason, and I agree with what you just mentioned. Also, we really don't have a plan in place right now as to what we're going to do. Um, I think it's just a little, a little early yet. Um, like Doug mentioned, we got in fact we got an open spot on that water board too. Right? Yeah, we do. So, you know, let let's get them on board and then just go from there. And, and like within a year, if it's, things ain't working out, just do some of those things that you just said. You know, join the two water departments, get rid of some, you know, combine. But I, I think it's just a little too early right now. I, I disagree. I think now okay. is absolutely the time. Okay. Because it puts the option on. I'm just saying, I mean, I understand what you're saying. And no matter how this comes out, yeah. I mean, this could go on there and it could, we still have to work together. Mm -hmm. But we have to put the option on the table to combine these two departments together and start working together. And that, that has to be on the table. And for us to say, well, nothing's on the table, I think at this point, after the money that we've spent, I just don't know how you tell, after a legal bill of 100 grand. I mean, when does the voter get a chance to weigh in? Mm -hmm. That's and all we're asking is for the voters to vote. That's it. That's it. That's all we're asking right now. And I think I think it's good. I think it's, it's I just want to be clear. I mean, I'm not sure exactly because you're right, Joe. We haven't really researched which way it's going to go. Right. But we need to have the option on the table. What, what happens if they vote to abolish this in November and, and we don't have a, a way to operate that department effectively? I mean, I've heard from some of our key employers in town that the quality of water is absolutely critical. Absolutely. And so to sit here in late August, abolish the board in November without one heck of a good plan to make sure we ensure quality water to not only the key employers but to every citizen in town, and that, yeah. that makes me a little nervous. I think we plus, take a it's a big risk. step. Yeah, I mean, plus that if it, the vote is no, the voters don't want to do this, then our opportunity to cooperate and work in a more cordial manner might not come down the pike right. as easily as if we try and negotiate and work with them now. And if it doesn't work, then we could go with this option. I think we stuck with a plan, and I think it's, so far it looks like it's got a possibility to help. And I think we should give it a try continue to give it a try. What really scares me is the unrest and the, that's not the right word, the, we owe it to the wastewater department to get it back in, in functioning order. And I'm just afraid we're gonna have too many dysfunctional departments on our hands <laughs> if, if we, you know, let this, you know, this is gonna send a message and who knows what's gonna happen to the water department. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we end up with a third party, We'll probably be looking at a vote, and the third party can run them both, but we don't know that yet. We're, we're a long ways from We can't even decide if we want to let them run wastewater yet. So, and, I mean, and Jason's idea about the two, the two uh, head wages is, is exactly correct, but you know how it is, you get one head, you're gonna have two, you're gonna have two lieutenants, but they'll make a decent salary too. So, I mean, you don't, you don't get a real fat cat getting rid of two heads, but I am for the working together part of it. Any other comments and questions? Okay, the motion is uh, supporting, uh, submitting a vote to the city uh, <coughs> to abolish the water board. Roll call, please. Jimenez? Yes. Moore? No. Benzetton? Yes. First day? Yes. Walling? No. <coughs> Yates? No. Caligari? No. Okay. Motion fails. 4 3. Okay. Item H. This is the last item on the regular agenda. Okay. This is a, 
uh, having a, it's a resolution determining an area of the city to be a blighted and economic development area that the rehabilitation conservation redevelopment development or a combination thereof of such area is necessary in the interest of the public health safety or welfare of the residents of the city and designating such an area as appropriate for urban renewal projects and adopting amendment number one to the Oskaloosa amended and restated urban renewal plan uh, the Oskaloosa urban renewal plan for the Oskaloosa urban renewal area was originally adopted in 1978, then amended in 1980, 83, 89, 92, three times, 1995, 96, 99, and 2001. The plan is now being amended and restated and will be known as the Oskaloosa Amended and Restated Urban Renewal Plan for the Oskaloosa Urban Renewal Area. Objectives of Amendment 1 to the amended and restated urban <coughs> renewal plan include confirming the objectives and types of urban renewal projects that can be undertaken by the city, confirming the list of proposed projects to be undertaken within the urban development and renewal area, adding land to the urban renewal area. The land being added by this amendment is primarily undeveloped agricultural property located adjacent to Highway 23. This land is zoned as general industrial and the area has potential to be developed as an industrial corridor. The land added is designated as amendment number one to the amended and restated urban renewal plan. Number four, reaffirming all legal descriptions from previous amendments to the urban renewal area. And number five, removing self-imposed voluntary expiration dates and clarifying the time frame that the area will remain in full force and effect. Consultation on the proposed amendment number one to the Oskaloosa amended and restated urban renewal plan is required by section 403.5 Section 2 of the Code of Iowa is amended, and it was held on the 28th day of July 2014 in the City Manager's Office of City Hall. Uh, specific information regarding Amendment 1, including an explanation of the history, purpose, description, project, objectives, types of renewal activities, proposed urban renewal projects, financial information, development plan, public building analysis, agreement to include agricultural land, urban renewal financing, property acquisition, development, de development, agreements, urban renewal plan amendments, effective period, repealer, and severability clause can all be found specifically within pages 2.2 to through 15 of the amendment number one to the Oskaloosa amended and restated urban renewal plan for the Oskaloosa urban renewal area document included with this item. Feels like I read all 15 of those pages already. Um, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Is there anyone who would care to speak to this? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Oh. Second. Okay. Any discussion on it? Michael, on the, the last three pages on the back side show the areas. Um, the difference. Very the only difference, uh, Mayor Council, Councilmember Walling, the, the only difference would be the name of the property owner. And so when we were putting together this addition to the tax of the urban renewal area, uh, the law requires that if there's an agricultural property uh, that's greater than 10 acres and has been used for ag purposes within the last, I think, three or five years, we have to re receive the concurrence of that property owner to include them within the urban renewal area. And so the, you'll see there's uh, Mr. Walters, Mahaska Development Group, and then you'll have Musco Corporation. Those are the three property owners that are being added into the urban renewal area. So the maps aren't different, it's just that okay. piece that says who they are. Thank you. Mahaska Development. Okay. Any further questions? Comments? Roll call, please. Moore? Yes. Ben Zetton? Yes. Verste? Yes. Walling? Yes. Yates? Yes. Calajuri? Yes. Jimenez? Yes. <laughs> okay, that passes. Item I. This is the consider an ordinance amending ordinances 576, 1064, and 1106 providing that general property tax is levied and collected each year on all property located within the amended urban here we go again. The amended Oskaloosa Urban Renewal Area in the city of Oskaloosa, County of Mahaska, State of Iowa, by and for the benefit of the State of Iowa, City of Oskaloosa, County of Mahaska, Oskaloosa Community School District, and other taxing districts, 
be paid to a special fund for payment of principal and interest on loans, monies advanced to, and indebtedness, including bonds issued or to be issued, incurred by the city in connection with the amended Oskaloosa Urban Renewal Area, Amendment Number 1, uh, to the Oskaloosa Amended and Restated Urban Renewal Plan. First reading. If the City Council has approved the resolution amending the existing urban renewal area, which we did, this ordinance change provides the necessary code amendments to collect tax increment revenues from the entire Amendment Number 1 area to the amended and restated area. The City must make its request for tax increment revenue to the County on or before December 1st of each year. The increment taxes are collected during the following fiscal year and are distributed to the County with the regular collection of tax receipts during that year. For an amendment that adds property, passage of the ordinance included with this item freezes the property valuation base for determining incremental tax revenue at the level existing on January 1st of the calendar year preceding the effective date of the ordinance. The date when the city next certifies to the county for tax increment reimbursements starts the clock for certain amendments that have a limit on the number of years that tax increment can be collected. So, um, do we have a motion supporting this change in ordinances? Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. First day? Yes. Walling? Yes. Yates? Yes. Calgary? Yes. Jimenez? Yes. Moore? Yes. Okay, that passes. Takes us to the end of the agenda. Uh, reports from city staff. Mike? No, sir. Okay, Amy? Yes, sir. City Attorney. Nothing, thank you. Okay, moving on. City Council information. Uh, anything that others would want to add? Joe, how about if we start with you? I have nothing. Aaron? Nothing. No, thank you. No. <coughs> Doug? Can I ask a question on an item that we dealt with? <laughs> <laughs> the item uh, that dealt with the vacation of the alley and we voted it down tonight, if Mr. Wolfswinkle does he have the option of coming back at a later date and requesting that again? It would be my opinion, yes, though, but if he does, so he needs to go back to square one. Right. I guess only he, he since left, but I would encourage him to consider that at some point in the future. I'd like to see him work with, with Mr. Fisher in a win-win situation, but I think you also need to look at a way that can all this fit with the zoning that we talked about because he's put some money into that concrete and that's good. And and I, I think I'd like to have him have that alley if it doesn't limit your opportunity to expand. But if, as I think Jason pointed out, if you can't expand because of the ordinances and everything, then we may as well vacate that alley tonight. So I guess I would, he's not here, but I'd encourage him to think about that in the future. That's all I have. Okay. Tom, anything? No. Jason? Okay. And I have nothing to add. We have a motion for adjournment. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.